A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jaw of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own, If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. 
But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I will admit that one of my guilty pleasures is watching TV preachers. Uh, some of them, I'd have to say, uh, really have some very strange things that they utter. But half the time I'm watching it because of the show, uh, whether it's some glorified golden and black embroidered graduation gown and hands waving in the air. And of course, there's the frequent mention of what they call love offerings. Now, love offerings, of course, anyone who watches them knows, refers to money, pure and simple. But then I hear tonight's gospel and I say, mm, you know, if I don't want lightning to strike, Maybe dressed like this, seated up here with a title like Monsignor, and understanding that you have two collections tonight, maybe I just better shut up. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, we hear these readings pretty regularly, and we have to ask, what does it actually say to us? We can't run a church, we can't run a business, we can't run anything without money. And quite frankly, just looking like something that the cat dragged in, if we came to church, well, one would have to say, is that giving honor and glory to God? Probably not. 
So there will be vesture, there will be collection, so on and so forth, but maybe there's a context for this. Some of the context is given in that second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, that the thing against which we measure ourselves is something we can never equal, just to say the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. We are never going to be at that level, but it does call for a personal generosity, a personal sacrifice. And the only way that's possible, as we find out in our reading from the first book of Kings, is with some trust in the Lord, that the Lord will look out for us, that the Lord will care for us. But maybe the thing we need to consider most of all in the gospel is what Jesus says. Some of us giving of ourselves out of our surplus. Maybe what's being asked for is giving out of our need, and that may not boil down to money. It may be some other things. Can we, for instance, in our overburdened, busy, hyper-scheduled lives, make time for people for whom the days pass by in loneliness, by themselves, waiting for just somebody to spend a few moments with them? Isn't that generosity out of our own need? We need time, and we're giving them what little time we have. Can we, on those days when it's bad hair, burnt toast, stubbed toes, and every other silly thing that can go wrong before 7.30 in the morning has even passed, hold on to a good word and a smile for somebody who just may be more disheartened, more upset, more in need of a little bit of encouragement. Isn't that generosity out of our need? In the end, many of the very things we need are the things we need to share. Jesus gives of his life so we would have life. Is there something we can give of ourselves without just saying, I'll solve the problem by putting something in the basket or sending to the missions? Maybe there's something to be done here. Maybe there's something to be done now. So in the end, the question of judgment, that harsh judgment of which Jesus speaks of the scribes, may not be a matter of titles or fundraising or vestments. Maybe lightning strikes, maybe lightning strikes, if when all of our piety is done, it never adds up to the point that someone else first needs to count.